Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Reads. I am so glad that this is a long holiday weekend. I worked this morning, only a half day today. I'm so glad to be off Monday. Whatever you choose to do for this long holiday weekend, I hope that you will still pray, take precautions and be safe because we still are very much in the midst of a pandemic. So last time I was here, I talked about Mrs. Wiggins by Mary Monroe, and I did end up giving or, or doing a book review on that book. I didn't give any spoilers in that video. I did my level best not to do that. So if you want to find out what I thought about the book with no spoilers, please check out that review here on my channel. I listened to my book club selection, which was sold on a Monday by Christina McMorris. I gave the book three stars. I thought it was good. I wish I had had the physical copy in front of me and not just listen to the audiobook, but my library didn't have the physical copy available. You know how sometimes you just want the physical copy so that you, in case you want to go back and reflect on some things or make note of certain things that really is a little bit harder with the audio book. But I love listening to books. Don't get me wrong. I, I really do. Um, we had a really good discussion on the story, which was about a reporter named Ellis who snaps a picture of a sign that says two children for sale and picture of, of kids there. And he instantly regrets it. The picture is not meant for publication, but since he is a reporter and um, his boss gets a hold of the picture is published and it sets off a chain of events that ends up being very devastating for a particular family. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but you can look at the synopsis of the book on Goodreads. Again, it is Sold on a Monday by Christina McMorris. Next, I read The Three Mrs. Grays by Shelley Ellis. I believe this was my first novel by Shelley Ellis. I enjoyed it. It's one of those messy books that I like. Um, lots of drama and trauma in this story. You could tell by the title, The Three Mrs. Grays. So Cyrus Gray is, is shot and three women, ooh, three women who are his wives find out about each other. There's, um, Oh my goodness, why did why why can't I remember her name? There's Noelle, who is the fashion model, who is very beautiful. She knows probably more about him than his other two wives, which is surprising to me because he has a wife of many years, Vanessa. He and Vanessa were married the longest. They had children together, but they also had some problems in their marriage. And then there is Diamond. Diamond is the wife he is actually with at the time he is shot. Diamond comes from a very rough background and she is looked at as possibly the prime suspect or one of the prime suspects in his um, in, in Cyrus's um, shooting. And the story revolves around these three wives and how they're trying to piece together what was going on with their husband trying to decide whether they're going to trust or battle one another and dealing with some of the own, their own issues that they have in their personal lives. So it, it was very good. But what I didn't know when I read the book is that it is going to be a part of a trilogy. And now I have to wait. <laughs> I have to wait until I think next year for book two. And I said, man, if I had known that, I would have waited to read this book in maybe December or January, you know, because now I have to wait such a long time to see what happens. Um, it is a thriller in the sense of how the book ends, and that's all I'll say about that. Again, no spoilers. Let's see, what else have I finished? I think those were the last two books that I actually finished. Yes. No. <laughs> so in, in May, I 
did a buddy read with Patrice Jones. And I call her the buddy read queen because she does buddy reads with so many different people. And I'll tell you, it was a pleasure to do a buddy read with her. Together we read Wench by Dolan Perkins Valdez. And we had such good conversation back and forth about this book. There were times she was ahead of me reading, times I was ahead of her reading, but we ended around the same time and I really did enjoy it. I, I enjoyed her insight on the different chapters and, and some of the things that she brought out. I'm like, yeah, that was such a good point. So Patrice Jones, if you see this video, thank you so much for doing the buddy read with me. And to everyone else, please check out this book. It is about slave owners who take their um, enslaved mistresses to a resort with them each year on a vacation. And it's not exactly what you think it might be. I don't want to, I don't want to even, it's a good book. I don't want to give any spoilers, but it, it's just very different from what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be about these slave owners and their mistresses out being, not only just being together, but really enjoying more of a vacation type atmosphere together. But that's not exactly, okay, that is not, <laughs> that is not what this book is about, but it, it was very good. It was heartwarming. It was heart wrenching. There were some really sad things that happened in this book. Very few triumphs, I would say, but I would definitely suggest that you pick it up and read it. I, I think that they were there were some interesting characters in this book that um, I enjoyed some of the subplots in the story. And just check it out. Just check it out. And I really do want to do another book by her think I might do Balm, but I'm not sure when. But yeah, I think, yeah, I think I might try that one later. Okay, so currently I'm reading The Final Revival of Opal and Niv by Donnie Walton. And I'm on Clubhouse. I am a member of the Diverse Shelves book club there. And in one of the, the rooms, if you know anything about Clubhouse, you go into a room it's like a, an auditorium, so to speak. And you have speakers that would be on stage, uh, your panelists. And, and, and this is all audio by phone, by the way, for those of you who aren't familiar. And so they were interviewing the author of this book on Monday. And I had just left the library where I had checked out this book. So it, it was perfect timing. And I love the way this book was written. And I even, I, I didn't, I had heard people say that the book was good. And when I got home and I opened up the book and I looked at it, I said, wow, this writing style is very different. I had an opportunity to come on stage, so to speak, that's the terminology in Clubhouse, to come on stage and ask the author about the writing style of this book. And it's written in oral history fashion. And she does such a great job of it. I've been reading a little bit of it um, this week. I've had some other things to do, but today I've read a good bit and I hope to get more reading done since we have a long weekend. But, oh, I didn't even tell you what the book is about. I'm sorry. Opal and Nev is about a, um, a woman named Opal who becomes a black punk artist before her time. Um, she ends up hooking up with this singer, songwriter, Neville Char Charles, and they make music together for many years. And this is their oral history. Um, different people are chiming in different aspects of their lives. I'm, I'm very early in the book, but so far the writing is fantastic. She does a great job. With this, with the writing in this book. Also, I picked up Yellow Wife by Sadiqa Johnson. I, I mean, Brown Girl Reading. I saw her her interview with the author on her Instagram page, and 
everyone says it's phenomenal. I can't wait to read it. So yeah, this one is next. Now for June for Read Caribbean, I wasn't exactly sure what I might try to read. Um, so I picked up a book that I already have here at home. And it is a short book. So I'm hoping I can get through this book. And if I happen to um, finish these books in time to squeeze in a another Caribbean read, I will do that. But this one is The Dew Breaker by Edwige Denticat. And this one is about a quiet man, a good father and husband, a fixture in Brooklyn, in his Brooklyn neighborhood, landlord and barber with a terrifying scar across his face. As the book unfolds, moving seamlessly between Haiti in the 1960s and New York City today, we enter the lives of those around him and learn that he has also kept a vital, dangerous secret. So I'm looking forward to, to reading this one. And if I, do, if I have um, enough bandwidth, I'll squeeze in another one and I'll let you know about that one later. I do need to start my book club selection in June also. I had never really heard anybody online talking about this book. It's a memoir, Black Lotus, A Woman's Search for Racial Identity by Seal Lay Abrams. That's a really nice, simple cover, but it's, it's very, very nice. So let's see, let me figure out what it's about. A lot of times I get these books because they're for a book club and I don't really even know what they're about. Um, author and activist Seal Lay Abrams was born to a Chinese immigrant mother and a white American father. At the age of five, her family was ripped apart by a divorce that would erase her mother from her life. In the wake of her absence, Abrams was left alone to grieve her mother's disappearance and reconcile the growing realization that there was truly something different about her from the rest of the family members. She was the only one in her family with a tousle of wild curls and brown skin. Uh-oh. As a convenient lie based in part on the desire to raise his children, in a race-neutral household, her father would explain that her skin was darker than the rest of the family because she was born in Hawaii. At the age of 14, the man she thought was her birth father made the bombshell revelation that Abrams was not his biological child, that in fact, she was the daughter of a man of African descent who didn't know of her existence. Okay. Uh, this shocking news would take her down a painful road to forge an authentic ethnic identity in spite of the overt bigotry in her community and her own internalized racism and self-hatred. A teenage runaway and high school dropout, Abrams would struggle with single parenthood, depression, abuse, and an alcohol addiction that nearly destroyed her. Eventually, she would begin a path to healing that helped her leave behind the shame over her birthright and move toward a celebration of her blackness. I cannot wait to read this book. Oh my goodness. Doesn't that sound good? Again, it's Black Lotus, Seal Lie Abrams. That one, that one sounds good. Our discussion is July 11th. So yeah, I definitely have to read this one in June. So woo. Honey, that's going to be a good discussion. And we're going to a winery too. I don't drink alcohol, but the atmosphere, I think. And it's going to be good. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm excited. So anyway, um, don't forget to follow Karen of Run Right Reads, Pita of Comfy Cozy Up. Um, oh, I knew I was going to forget her name. Oh, what is her name? I follow her. I follow her, but I can't think of her name right now. For hashtag read Caribbean, okay? Um, I can't think of her name right now. Why is that? 
Book of Sins on Twitter is her is her name. At Book of Sins, C I N Z. And if someone has her other deets, please leave them down in the comments below. But please follow the three of them for hashtag read Caribbean and, and also of course follow the hashtag. Let me know what you are going to read for Read Caribbean this year. I'm looking forward to um gather more books to add to my ever-growing TBR. So that is my Friday reads for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read any of the books that were mentioned in this video. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. And until next time, everybody, keep reading. Bye-bye.